Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and my bubble head is back here for you today. Uh, we are checking out the new 2.920 features of the video sequence editor in Blender. So if you use Blender as a video editor, these new features are going to be very, very useful for you. Specifically, actually, what we're going to go over today is the transform tools. And for this, I'm actually just going to be using images, but they apply to videos as well. So I'm just going to add in this little raccoon image here that I got from publicdomainpictures.net. Just search raccoon, you'll find this picture. Uh, this person, either Jean Beaufort, if it's French, or Jean Beaufort, has released this raccoon image under public domain license. So thank you, Jean or Jean, whichever one it is. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to pump both of them in here. And right away, you can see here is... 2.8312, that's the latest long-term release, and this is 2.92, and we can see down here the 2.920 release candidate. And already you can see a huge difference by just bringing in an image. So I'm just gonna click over here and then period on the numpad, and you can see my screencast keys here. This is actually really cool because I never used the Blender screencast keys because I thought it was just for the 3D viewport, but you can actually make it go all over Blender. And I didn't realize that. So now I do, now I'll use it if I can. Uh, but let's go ahead and zoom in here. And this automatically put it on channel two. I'm not sure why, but I'm just gonna grab this and pull that up. In 2.92, you now can import an image or footage and it will pop to the correct aspect ratio and fit inside the view port, whichever image aspect ratio that you have set it at, right? And right now I have it set it at 1920 by 1080. So it fits it in there automatically. Um, with this one, what you'd have to do is you'd have to come over to your transform, but you don't actually have any way to transform it or scale it in your transform options in the video strip. And with this particular image you can't use offset because if you use offset it will make the picture the original dimensions but it won't fit it to your viewport here and so I mean you can move it you know if you want to position it a little bit better but in order to scale this you'd have to come over here select your strip press shift a and then add in an effect strip transform and with that, then you could do a uniform scale and then scale that down. But you can see, oh, look at that. You can't actually scale down images that are more or bigger than your resolution of your viewport here. And this was a huge headache in previous versions of Blender, all the way up until now, 9.2, which we'll get to in a second here. Um, but And then I could position it you know, back and forth, up and down, but I could also come back to the original strip and then position it like this. You can see I'm moving the image within the transform cropped scale. And if I tried cropping this, this is the result it gives you. Cropping it right, top, and this is like not at all cropping. No idea what this is. So what you would have to do if you want these same dimensions here, you would have to uh, come back to your original strip, uncheck offset. So then the whole image is put in the entire screen. And then you would have to uh, scale these individually. So uh, we, we don't want that crop on there either. So then we'd scale the X down to match. Um, and you could probably do calculation on the original image size, the height, uh, and then what the width is supposed to be for the height. I'm just gonna eyeball it here to make it look roughly similar since we've got an image over here. So something like this. Okay, so this is a huge pain. Not only is it a huge pain, you have two strips here. And when you have a whole bunch of different video footage and images that you're overlapping with each other, then this gets really cluttered really quickly. Now, 2.92, let's see, we've already got it exactly how we want it, given the fact that we wanted the original image in our full viewport here. Now, all we have to do is come over to transform because all your transform options are right here. Your position, X and Y, your scale, uh, X and Y, your rotation, 
and your mirror, all in the video or the image strip itself, which is so stinking awesome. Um, here, you have just the offset, but there was no scale or rotation. You'd have to add a transform for if you wanted an extra position of X and Y, which is a little redundant. And then your scale and your rotation options are here. So this is a huge improvement in 2.92. And then not to mention just faster. So if I click play over here and then I click play over here, you can see right away, um, this has to crunch a little bit harder to get that cache of the transform strip. Um, but this one doesn't actually have that transform strip added onto it, so it's just really smooth. Nothing really has changed with this. Uh, I mean, if I maybe make this bigger, let's see if this any change. Nope, just smooth as butter, just plays without any hitches there. Also notice with the scale, the X and the Y are not relative to each other, but they're relative to the original aspect. So, um, if I put one here in both of these, it this is the original size of the image. It's not a square one by one, which if you would do that here, one by one, it would be, well, it's not square here either, but it's not the original image. One by one here is in reference to the resolution 1920 by 1080, which is why you see the skewing and stretching of the image. Um, so that's another improvement on that transform option. So we already looked a little bit of the cropping over here, um, but that was the transform crop, which gave us this really weird result. Um, but if we do the crop on the original here, you also need to, uh, still having that really weird effect here, but then it's also having the transform as the cutoff point. Um, but if we use the offset here and then the crop, then it slides it. I'm just going to actually delete this here. So now we have it offset and we're going to crop this uh, from left, from the left. Well, you can see that actually doesn't crop it from the left. It moves the whole image left till it's out of the image area, which technically, yes, it crops it, but it's just so unintuitive. Um, now, if you crop it from the right, well, that makes sense because you can see it's so many pixels coming in cropping from the right. Uh, same thing if we do this back to zero and the top. So top down, that makes sense. Cropping from the top, going down. From the bottom, no, it's the same thing. It just pushes it down till it's out of the cropping area. So in order to see the crop, you just have to bring that up, which you can see there. And then you can see how that's working there. Okay. Again, not very intuitive, a bit of a pain to try to maneuver. But look, let's say I just want to crop this image to where the raccoon's face is here. Uh, very easy over here in 2.92. All I have to do, come over to crop. There isn't any sort of offset that I have to click. Um, if I want to start from the bottom, I just start from the bottom, crop that up towards the chin, crop it in from the right uh, a little bit. Oh, that's too much, obviously, uh, there. And then from the left, and then from the top. I mean, this, oops, it's a little sensitive there. It kind of jumps. But this here is super, super intuitive. Like, this is how you would expect cropping to crop. Pretty straightforward. So I'm super excited that this is working as it should, but it's been, it's taken so long for us to get just to here. And uh, it pains me to think that we haven't had this already. But we're getting it soon, so no point in looking back. Okay, so these are just the settings. Let's see what this looks like in action. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a Ken Burns effect. Come on, delete. All right. Do it, sorry, do a little bit of a Ken Burns effect with this image here. So we're bringing that in over here. And a Ken Burns effect is basically just a moving still image. Um, so either zooming in or zooming out of it. Uh, I'm going to zoom out. So basically, let's bring this up here again. Um, but I'm going to bring this all the way over to the end um, of our 250 frame range here. Same thing over here. Let's just bring this there. Okay, so like before, we have to make sure this is in the correct image aspect. Let's check our offset. Nope, image is too big. We can't do that. We can do this if the image is smaller than our resolution, but we can't do it if it's bigger. So add in a transform, and actually we can hide 
our original one here because it's just taking the information from the transform. Uh, let's do a scale on the X. And I'm just going to eyeball it here, get those margins to something that looks almost like this one. It's not going to be perfect, but yeah, so there we go. So over here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start zoomed in. So the way we do this, basically easy, just scale the X and the Y, and you can click and drag over both of them down and then start dragging in whichever direction you want to zoom in or zoom out so that you drag both of them at the same time. So about, uh, I don't want to go too far. Let's go about right here. And then I'm going to position this uh, a little bit more in the center with the guy and it, see that's a little bit of a bug. I think it kind of jumps when the mouse goes out of the screen sometimes. So there we go. And to animate these, just click these buttons to the right of the sliders here. And that's where we're gonna start. And then we're going to go to the end and then back one because the very end is basically the next frame, which we don't have anything on the next frame. So we have to go back and on this one, we're going to adjust these. We're going to zoom out. I don't want to zoom out all the way, of course, because um, actually let's put these at zero here and then zoom out, not all the way, but about right here. Okay. Now you can see we have orange, which means we've changed it from the original keyframes, but it's on a different frame number. So we got to make these keyframes again. And now if we start at the beginning and press play, you can see it zooms out there really slowly, kind of giving like a cool sunset kind of solemn effect. He's walking, kind of looking down, zooming out to see his surroundings. So there you go. A little bit of a Ken Burns effect there. But do you see how easy that was? All we did was plug in the image, set the keyframes, and then we're good to go. Here, we not only had to plug in the image, we had to resize it, but we could only resize it with a transform strip. Now we could click and drag and then animate this just like we did there, and then place these here and animate like that. That's one option. I don't actually like that option, so I'm gonna undo that, get back that. Uh, I'm gonna take both of these and then control G to make them into a meta strip, that way, I can add a, an effect strip transform on this one, and then I just hide that one. And now I can click uniform scale. And that way I only have one slider to work with. And that is nice. I wish they had that option over here. Just do uniform scale. Um, maybe they will in the future, but um, this does make things a little bit easier. But you have to go through all these hoops with the meta strip and all of that stuff before you can actually even get here. So it's still a bit of a hassle. Um, okay, so same thing here. Um, make this a little bit over here and then this up like that and add our keyframes. Go to the end, back one and zoom out, but not all the way out. Oh, let's make these zero again first so that we can adjust that a little bit better. Yeah, something like that. And you have this. Okay. So let's go to the beginning in each of these and play and see what we have. Okay, so we already have 2.92, smooth as butter, just zooming out. We have this being cached in. We have a meta strip with a transform strip inside of it and then a transform strip on top of it. Um, so Blender is really crunching over here. So to even preview this, to cache it in, we have to wait. And we haven't even changed anything over here uh, as far as the view. So if we go view, it's scene render size. Um, to maybe make this go faster, we can go to view and then uh, proxy size 25%. And that does go a little bit faster, but we're looking at 25% of the image here. And once we change it from 25% of the image back to uh, scene render size, it gets rid of that cache and it starts to recalculate it anyway. So it doesn't really do us any good. Uh, we don't have to do any of that over here. That is pretty awesome. So there you go. That is the new transform tools in 2.92 release coming out soon. You can get it uh, right now. Um, you don't have to wait for it to come out. You can go and download the experimental. Let's see, how do we do this? So let's go to downloads um, from, from blender.org. 
uh, just click on download Blender 2.91 or click on the download up here, it doesn't matter. And then scroll down and right here, download Exp Blender Experimental. Okay, here you go. This is your Blender 2.920 candidate. And then you can also even do Blender 2.93 Alpha if you're excited to see what Blender 2.93 has. And of course you can do Mac or Linux as well. Um, but then what you do is when you click on this, it will download it to your folder and then you'll have to unzip it. And then you have to actually open it up in the folder. Let me show you. So once you're finished with uh, downloading it, you'll extract it into a folder and then you'll open the folder and you actually have to run it from here. So it doesn't actually do the whole install for you. Maybe you do it like that anyway, but um, that is how you would run it. All right, so that is it for me. Stay tuned and you'll see me in the next one.